Hello again, this is uh, Red Hat Dan on Tech again this week. We're going to be talking about uh, a little bit more about containers and a little bit more about SC Linux. Um, so going back um, several years, no, actually no, towards the beginning of uh, doing SC Linux, one of the key things that people were always asking about is how can I confine a user? So most of SC Linux is, is concerned with uh, confining services. So if you have external services, we want to use SC Linux to control those services and prevent break-ins to the system. Um, similar with containers, it's right, it tends to be services running it, not really kind of towards users. And anybody that's ever played with SC Linux will um, look down and usually say that the user is running is what we call unconfined T, which really means that process the default processes that he executes and not confined um uh, yeah you're able to do anything he wants to do in the system um over the years we've had attempts to confine users and there's there is some uh user confinement um on the system uh, based on se linux um and uh, but there's lots and lots of issues with that um what i often get asked by uh, users and customers is around can I confine a user on a system? And what they usually ask is, I want to allow a user or even an admin to get onto the system, but I want to prevent them from accessing this directory. Or I want to allow them to see everything except for this directory type of thing. And and usually uh, the big problem there is it's, it's very difficult to write that kind of policy. Um, and users usually can't define exactly, you know, you know, what the user is supposed to be able to do and what he isn't allowed to do and through transitionals. Anyways, it's a big mess. Um, and that's one of the reasons we never had real confined users in SC Linux. Um, but uh, now that I've been working with containers and looking at the technology over the few years, of base, you know, a couple of years ago, I came up with the concept of, you know, could we use, you know, basically I'll use it to log into a system, but as soon as you log down to the system, get it inserted into a shell you know could could we insert them into a container um and lock them down inside the container so about a year and a half ago or two years ago i, I talked to a few engineers inside of red hat and said let's let's create something that basically sets it up so we use logging into a system um gets automatically injected into a container and then he'd be controlled by se linux uh, but only be able to uh, view past the container and then maybe we could leak the information we want them to see. So using volume mounts, we could add volumes to his container and you'd only be able to see subsections of the system um, or only particular directories that we wanted them to have access to. Um, anyways, um, what I'd like to do now is introduce um, the person who did a lot of the work on this. His, his name is Lokesh Menverka and he's a senior software engineer at Red Hat on the Podman team. Uh, welcome Lokesh. Thanks, Dan. How's it going? Good. Um, so I'd like you to uh, walk through a demonstration of uh, Podman Shell, uh, uh, Podman SH, sometimes we call, um, and show how it works. Okay. Uh, so what is Podman SH? Uh, Podman SH is basically a, an executable at user bin Podman SH, accompanied by a user quadlet. So what's the point of Podman SH? Podman SH will be used by administrators to confine the users of their system to a locked in container environment. Now, how much you want to lock in or how much flexibility you want to give to the users that would be controlled by quadlets and system D. So let me give you a quick walkthrough. Um, so first off, the executable is at User bin Podman SH. Also, it's added to the list of shells right here. Now, um, I have already created a user called uh, LockTU. Let's check the user's credentials. Now, the user has user ID 1002 and his shell his or her show or their show is already set to user bin Podman SH. Now to show you an example of logging into the system, I'll show an SSH example. First off, let's examine the quadlet container that sets up the 
environment for the SLOC2 user. Okay, so the Quadlet, um, Quadlet file that defines the user environment is called pod-h.container. Uh, also, the container name is pod-h. That's how Podman SH finds out what container to execute. Uh, a quick note, uh, how it finds out, how Podman SH finds out the, the right container to execute. Podman SH basically reuses the logic for Podman exec, and it checks if the Podman SH container is running and just execs into the container. So, so I noticed on, um, the you put it, you dropped a config file basically defining a quadlet and quadlets were things we learned about last week and last week's uh, um, show. Um, the quadlet uh, here is based on UID. So it goes on to Etsy containers, system D, users, and UID. Is there a way to handle groups of users? If I wanted to. Um, so uh, group ID support, uh, I have yet to work on. I don't think it's there at this moment. Okay. Um, and there, I, is there a way to set it up so any user that gets on the system always gets stuck into a container? Uh, yes. So right now you'll see that uh, this quadlet is defined for this particular user, but you can put the same Podman SH container into just the user's directory, like uh, go one level up. Uh, once you have that quadlet set, it will work by default for all users. Okay, great. And so... This quadlet basically will set up a system D service that have that system D will then start before the user logs in, or it will be triggered when the user logs in the first time. It, it will be triggered when the user logs in the first time. Also when the user logs out, when all their sessions are closed, the container will automatically be closed. Uh, quick note, there has been an enhancement, uh, by Felix Niederwander. I think he works at SUSE. Uh, it, it allows for more configuration of Podman SH. So basically you can change the shell type, uh, right. Uh, by default, we've been using a uh, user bin SH, but, uh, with his work, it'll let you use user bin bash, user bin ZSH. Also, you can set your container name to something other than Podman SH, but of course the executable will still be called Podman SH. Right. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and what happens if I log on to the system twice? So you're about to show an SSH example. What happens? Yes. Uh, it'll, uh, there will be two Podman SH, uh, processes spawn. So I think I can, I can show that to you. Uh, first off, let me show you one, uh, you know, I'm already logged in. Uh, let me log out from another terminal. Now I'm logging in. Okay, so the same user, uh, if the same user is logged in multiple times into, into the same host with Podman SH as the login shell, uh, we can check the, the list of processes for that user, the list of SFH processes in that case. And we see there's two SSH logins uh, over here and over here. So it's, so the, the user can basically log in as many times as they want into the environment and they'll be dropped into the same environment. So we'll see there are other processes and then, uh, so what happens when, you know, if one of the, the, the initial user logs out, does the session go away? Uh, okay. Now let's have a, a log out of a one SSH from another terminal? Yes. Okay, now I have walked down. Now, let's see. Okay, so you'll now see there's only one SSH. Um, so the session stays running, so. So the session stays, yes. Yeah. Cool, and um, right now, if I wanted to, um, and if I log out of the last session, then does the container go away? It should, uh, right now I'm only using the default behavior, uh, of Podman SH, so it should go away. Let's verify that. A log out of the last remaining session. Uh, yeah, now take a look. 
Yeah. Now there are no more SSH sessions for that user. Oh, very cool. Mm -hmm. And the container has gone away because it would show that running as the user. So the right. container yeah. runs as the, you know, in this case, we're using rootless containers. The rootless container runs as the root user. Um, let's take a look at the, uh, could you share the quadlet again? We'll take a look at the quadlet. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, sure. Yeah. So if I wanted to share into the, into the, for the user, say one particular directory on the system. Yes. The container, how would I do that? Uh, actually I did create another user already. Uh, let me show you that example. Um, so it should be, let me find here. Now, okay. So this is another user, uh, with admin SH as the login shell. Um, the user ID is 1004. So I've created another, uh, Another quadlet for this user at, let's see, container system D users. You'll see there's this extra line, uh, which volume mounts a directory from the host to the container environment. Now I'll try logging in as this yeah. user, uh, so to find on those volume line, those that percent yes. eight, that's a special character that says. Tell us. Oh yes. So percent H, uh, means the, the host itself and, uh, the host home directory and this data directory is, is actually present on the host system. Uh, and it gets volume mounted into the container environment as that user's home directory. Okay. And so, yeah, yeah. Colin Z basically, uh, no, Dan, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Colin Z tells uh, Quadlet to preserve the container SE Linux labels for the container. Is that right? It, it, it tells it to make it private for the container. So basically okay. that only this, only this container can use that home directory after that point. So other containers on the system will not be allowed to use it. Cool. Thank you. All right. So now let's try logging in as, uh, uh this user. Okay. So I'm logged in as this user on the same, on the same machine. Uh, okay. Now let's go to the home directory. Okay. Now I've already created a file called test. Now I'll create another test file. Okay. So we have created this file in the container environment. Now I'll log out and we'll go to that user's home directory. Um, and there'll be this data directory with where the data persists. Um, cool. So the file that we had created in the confined users home directory from the Podman SH environment has, uh, has persisted over here, uh, on, on the host machine itself. Now, the next time the user logs in, they should still see it in their environment. Uh, again. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So that, that, that brings up a point, I guess, is that in containers in the, in the Podman shell world, they, when the user logs out any, any data, anything that he created while inside the container, when the container gets destroyed is also destroyed. So the containers do not persist only volumes that are mounted into the container persist. Um, right. also with Quadlet, I think we can do all sorts of fancy stuff. We can, um, basically specify that the you know, the user has additional capabilities or anything that a quadlet can con configure. Um, lastly, I think guess with quadlet, we can also have them running in a totally different operating system. So you could do this say on a rel system and then have the containers running in Fedora. So from the user's point of view, he would think he's logged into Fedora and yet actually be running on top of a rel system or vice versa. Uh, that's right. Uh, I can actually, uh, I have that configured as well. Uh, 
So, okay, now on the host system, you'll see it's a CentOS Stream 9 environment. Now, if I log in as and find you host, uh, oops, there is a bug somewhere to work out. Uh, okay, now if you look at the confined users host environment, uh, sorry, confined users environment, it is a it's an actual rel environment using the UBI nine image. Uh, we can go back and visit their their Quadlet. So if you if you see the the container image used for this user was UBI nine, which meant a rel environment, and that's what the confined user was logged into. Uh, a quick check on the other user. Um, if we check the the other user, the first locked to U user, their environment was set. Uh, the container image was set to Fedora. Uh, we'll try logging in as that user, and they are dropped into a Fedora environment. So yeah, you have all sorts of. Uh, customizability and configuration configuration options uh, via Quadlet. So a key takeaway is Podman SH is a very simple wrapper around Podman Exec that just looks for a specific container uh, generated via a Quadlet file and then drops the user into that container. Uh, most of the magic is handled by Quadlet and Systemd and SUN. That's very cool. I guess a couple of things I'd point out is if you had 10 users SSHing into the box, each one gets stuck in their own container, and those users ran PS commands, they're only going to see the processes inside of the container. They're not going to know the other users are on the system. Um, so they'll be totally isolated. You can actually set up the containers also um, with network equals none. So you basically could allow a user onto a system, but they would not be able to create a connection out you know, from their point of view inside the container, they would have no network access. Um, so you can take advantage of all the really great features of containers um, inside of your Quadlet to really control what the user does on the system. Um, so that that's a great uh, demo, and uh, I think it's a great technology, and I hope everybody tries it out. Thanks very much, Lokesh. Uh, do you have anything else you'd like to say? I don't know. That's pretty much it. Thank you, Dan, for organizing this and for getting me into your pod medicine. Appreciate it. Okay, great. Uh, hope to see everybody next week. Thank you.